Section 88 of The Divine Comedy by Dante Alighieri, translated by Courtney Langdon. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Paradiso, Canto 21. The Seventh Heaven. Saturn. The Happiness of Contemplation. The Golden Ladder. Predestination. St. Peter Damien. And now mine eyes upon my lady's face were fixed again, and there with all my mind, which from all other objects had withdrawn. Nor was she smiling then, but... Should I smile? she said addressing me like semele wouldst thou become when she to ashes turned because my beauty which along the stairs of this eternal palace brighter burns as thou hast seen the higher we ascend is so resplendent that thy mortal strength at its effulgence were it not restrained would be as is a bough which lightning rends up to the seventh splendour we are raised which now beneath the burning lion's breast is rang downward mingled with his strength intently fix thy mind behind thine eyes and cause them to be mirrors of the figure which in this mirror will appear to thee he that should know what in the blessed face the nature of my vision's pasture was when i transferred me to another care would know since one was outweighed by the other how gladly i obeyed my heavenly guide within the crystal which as round the world it whirls bears its illustrious leader's name under whose rule all wickedness lay dead coloured like gold whereon a sunbeam shone a ladder i beheld which so high up ascended that my eye pursued it not i saw moreover coming down its steps so many glowing splendours that i thought that every star seen shining in the sky had been poured out of it and even as doors as is their natural wont when day begins together move to warm their chilly plumes and then without returning some fly off and some go back to whence they started first while others whirling in a circle stay such was it seemed to me the fashion here within the sparkling throng which came together whene'er they met upon a certain round and that which nearest to me there remained became so bright that in my thoughts i said i clearly see the love thou showest me but she whence i await the how and when of silence and of speech keeps still hence i against my will do well by asking naught she thereupon who in the sight of him who seeth everything my silence saw said unto me appease thy warm desire and i began my merit doth not make me worthy of thy reply but for the sake of her who granteth me the right to ask make known to me blessed life that art concealed in thine own joy the cause which draweth thee so closely to my side and tell me why that gentle symphony of paradise is silent in this wheel which down below sounds so devoutly through the other spheres thy hearing is as mortal as thy sight he answered me there is no singing here because of that which hinders beatrice from smiling down the holy ladder's steps have i so far descended but to give thee a welcome with my words and with the light which mantles me nor hath the greater love caused me to be more ready for as much or more love burns up yonder as those flames reveal to thee but that great charity which makes us ready servants of the council which rules the world allots here as thou seest i well perceive o holy lamp said i how that free love is in this court enough for following the eternal providence but this is what seems hard for me to see why thou alone among thy consorts here predestinated wert for just this task no sooner had i come to my last word than like a rapid millstone whirling round the light had of its middle made its centre and then the love within it answered me piercing the light wherein i'm here embosomed a ray of light divine upon me falls whose virtue as it mingles with my sight so lifts me o'er myself that i behold that highest essence whence it emanates hence comes the joy with which i'm flaming now for with thy sight as far as it is clear i equalize the clearness of my flame and yet the most enlightened soul in heaven the seraph who hath eyes most fixed on god would not avail to satisfy thy question for what thou askest plummeth so the depths of god's eternal statute from all that created vision is cut away and to the mortal world on thy return carry this charge that it presume no more to move its feet toward such a distant goal the mind which shineth here on earth is smoky 
consider hence how it can do down there what though assumed to heaven it cannot do so all conclusive were his words to me that giving up the question i confined me to asking humbly of him who he was between italy's two seashores cliffs arise not very far from thine own native place so high that thunders peal much lower down and form a lofty ridge called catria neath which a hermitage is consecrate whose wont to worship only gives it up he thus began for me his third address and then continuing said to serving god i there became so steadfastly devoted that beating upon olive juice alone i readily endured both heat and cold and was with thoughts contemplative content that cloisters want it was to yield these heavens abundant fruit but it hath now become so empty that its state must soon be known in that place i was known as peter damian and sinning peter in our lady's house i was upon the adriatic shore but little mortal life remained to me when i was sought and forced to take the hat which always passes on from bad to worse lean and barefooted safus came and then the holy spirit's mighty vessel came eating the food of any hostelry our modern shepherds now on either side need help to prop them help they weigh so much to guide and help to hold them up behind they cover so their palfreys with their cloaks that two beasts walk beneath a single hide o oh, patience that dost tolerate so much more flamelets at these words i saw descend from step to step and whirl and every whirl caused each of them to grow more beautiful and round this flame they came and having stopped uttered so deep a cry that none could here resemble it nor did i understand its words its thunder overcame me so end of paradiso canto twenty one